हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू इनोवेशन इन मार्केटिंग इन मार्केटिंग ऑफ इनोवेशन एंड हियर वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स सर्विसेज आई स्पेसिफिकली वॉन्टेड टू हाईलाइट फ्यू रेलिवेंट एलिमेंट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाउ टू मार्केट इनोवेटिव सर्विसेज वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ इनोवेशन इन मार्केटिंग विद डिफरेंट रेफरेंसेज बट टूडे इट्स अ सर्विस ओरिएंटेड वर्ल्ड एट लार्ज many many organizations they are purely focusing on services and even the product based organizations they are focusing on services and even you would see that we would be discussing that you know products are being marketed as services so service orientation is a very important element in today's era and we have to be you know innovative in all the aspects of services people are trying to do that if you will look into the history of organizations how they have traversed in terms of innovating upon services how creative they have been you would realize that we have come a long long way ahead in terms of as far as taking services to the people we have really developed a kind of a concern in terms of reaching to the hearts of people with reference to services definitely the intangibility of services uh gives us a lot of you know questions in terms of how to do that but definitely and especially when those are innovative services or we are trying to innovate upon services then it's a bigger question so let's see how you know uh things can be done as far as marketing of innovation in terms of services and here let me start with a scenario today especially in india and globally as well Uh, many of us we use uh, online uh, buying portals amazon for example now i was wondering a few days back you put so many things you know you, you surf your desired products and it's a, it's a very good website they prompt you towards different kinds of elements of that particular website and once they are taking you there you are selecting and shortlisting those products then you go into the specifications and you know the drill then you know somehow you think that okay here i zero in and this i may purchase you put that product in cart and after that you go ahead you are looking for either a similar kind of a product or a different product and then again going through a long drill of analyzing things and you know imagining yourself and and going through those kind of things you again put that product in cart many organizations they have started focusing upon how this product would look upon you for example lens cart has come a long way in doing that but amazon we don't have such kind of features or any buying portal for that matter we don't have such kind of features wherein you uh, you know go in detail and uh, try it out although people are working on those kind of algorithms wherein people would be actually experiencing those things upon themselves on screen but then if you are doing that on mobile phone even if that happens how would you analyze yourself in totality while wearing or you know using that kind of a product so there are several kinds of questions which would definitely be answered in due course of time probably people would have large full 6 feet kind of a screen in their homes just to try out products uh, when they are buying online probably and this can be an innovation for example you are going for an amazon Uh, subscription in amazon sends you a screen that this is from our side and this is the part of the subscription and you hang it somewhere on the wall and basically as soon as you you know connect it through wifi and uh, you know and then you are trying to imagine that how uh, this this apparel looks at you and this apparel you know virtually you know is is seen on on uh, your yourself as far as being mirrored by Uh, that thing or or some some uh, other mode or algorithm comes in wherein you know they capture your picture and you imagine that thing in full screen that can happen but that would require definitely costs and so many things here i am talking of you know innovation in services so we have started discussing that one by one and i was just imagining that if some somehow it happens because many a times when you purchase an apparel and it doesn't looks that good uh, the way it was looking you know uh, on screen when you were buying that you return it many a times and then there is a period wherein you can return that uh, that thing and so on so those kind of facilitations definitely those are innovations in services and flipkart launched it in india you know a pay as it reaches you and several other organizations gave uh, you know an advantage of returning back the goods and so on 
So, and then uh, you know those kind of, but that requires a process. But I was just imagining that for example, to start with, so you put, you have put those things in cart. For example, you have, you want to purchase a particular kind of a shoe and uh, you just feel like trying it out, how actually it would look on your feet. So, you have selected two, three models and you have put those in cart. You would not be purchasing all of them. Then you would be shortlisting one out of those. You would be taking uh, the help of some someone who would advise you that this would look better and this would look good and so on. Now, the person whosoever is advising may find it good with their own perception, uh, his or her own perception and or probably they would imagine you in that particular kind of an apparel or shoe and they would advise you the way to cut the long story short. If somehow Amazon sends you the complete cart, someone comes to you. Now, here is another important thing. The person who is carrying those goods to you should be well aware of what he is carrying to you. So, that kind of an augmentation must be done. Let us imagine that if even if that augmentation is not done for a while, this person comes and they say that your cart is here. Now, you have three models of the shoes. You try one those shoes one by one and the one you find best you pay for that and the rest are returned back to Amazon. The second element can be definitely if the person who is coming along with those shoes to deliver those shoes to you is aware of the products and the quality of those products is a trained salesman who knows what he is going to sell you. So, probably he is the person or she is the person who is going to help you know uh, although this you are finding this good, but this looks better on you sir, why do not you keep it keep this one probably you would end up keeping both and this would add up to the sales. So, can we look at this with the perspective of service innovation? We definitely can look at this with the perspective of service innovation. I was and, and you see you can elaborate this concept through wristwatches, through books, through several kinds of things you know through, through curtains for example, you know many a times you purchase curtains and you you uh, when those curtains they reach you, they are, those are looking very beautiful on screen and when they come, you, you definitely find those similar to the, uh, the, the concept you had in mind when you were ordering for those curtains. And when you hang those curtains finally, you find that okay, fine, I did a good thing, but ultimately somehow mm, mm, that, that is the point. So, that kind of a perspective, you know. So, here my, my submission to you is that for example, in case of Amazon or these kind of things, you know, cart kind of a thing is sent to you and that cart is having all the products you somehow wish to purchase. You try out those products within the time period and there, there is a perspective around that uh, those products which you know, which, uh, which you carry and then you find it right. And uh, this person is patient enough and they you know definitely some, some team members have to be added to this kind of a delivery system. And uh, then you keep the complete cart or one of those products and pay for those that is one thing. The second is that this sales person is somehow well versed of what they are going to sell you. So, for that you have either the complete sales team trained in different kinds of or several kinds of products or you actually have locally trained sales team who definitely you know would know that okay these kind of goods are to be supplied to this kind of a person and they would come along when the delivery person is coming. There can be several kinds of combinations in, in terms of uh, you know as far as service delivery goes or service goes. And you see if you will start imagining that how innovative you can be in different forms of services, you would realize that innovation in all the forms in all the services can be incorporated at, at a larger stage. And here we are ta talking of you know we are we are targeting uh, specific individuals, we, uh, we have been talking about individual targets and here we are talking of a situation wherein uh, you know marketing of innovations in services should be facilitated. So, if you are trying to do that, then an important element which is coming here is that you are actually facilitating the marketing of innovations. For example, you are marketing innovative products and uh, you know although you are innovating upon Amazon services or delivery services, but you are uh, you know marketing innovative products alongside, then this innovation in services would complement the sales of those innovative products as well. Because there those products you are trying for the first time, you do not know the actual you know uh, 
uh, the worth of those products which uh, you know you have imagined and so on. Now, uh, an interesting thing which was coming to my mind when I was thinking about this is that for example, you want to try out some food and that, that's an interesting part you you want to try out that okay uh, you know uh, i w wish to order some food basically and uh, you happen to for example you are ordering some pizza and you are trying out a new pizza now th this this is an innovation which they have done as far as the pizza goes and uh, there is one uh, pizza which you like and then you order it often so for example you tell uh, you know Domino's or Pizza Hut that I am ordering this pizza for the first time and would I like it and they would say why not sir and you are spending uh, you know x amount also then uh, you are anticipating that uh, you know two three people you would enjoy that pizza and somehow that pizza comes to you and they send it to you. If they give you an advantage that okay this is your we are sending you the your traditionally ordered pizza which you always do and this is the innovation you want to try out sir we are sending both the things to you. You try out the new one first. If you like it, you pay for that and you want to send the traditional one back, you send it back. If you want to keep both the pizzas uh, you know with you, you, you keep both of them and but if you uh, and even if you do not want to pay for the new one, you do not like it, you do not pay for that and you just enjoy the meal. If somehow we do that, it would not bring so many kinds of losses to you at the end of the day, you would be introducing new kinds of pizza through, the, through this new kind of a service wherein you would be retaining the customers and customers would not be feeling dejected if they do not like that pizza at the end of the day. Let us go a step further as far as you know the whole imagination goes and I was just thinking that why cannot we do this. For example, when you are ordering something uh, through you know some, some portal like you know some, some service like Zomato and these kind of uh, services which we have and you say that okay I want this kind of uh, particular kind of a suite or particular kind of a product which has to be ordered from this kind of a restaurant and uh, somehow you know this, uh, this product has to be brought uh, to me. They tell to the restaurant that uh, this customer is trying this product for the first time and uh, the customers and, and they give a particular kind of a feedback taking from you that how did you like that product for the first time when you tried this product. Now uh, you say that you see there, there had to be some changes which I would have liked at, as far as this particular kind of a product goes. Now they send this feedback to the restaurant, this restaurant directly gets connected to you on screen and while preparing that product, they customize that product with your help on screen at that particular time before sending it to you. How do you like this idea? I would definitely wait for this you know thing to be built upon in terms of a conversation. If you have some other ideas regarding that which you have experienced that you know these services should be augmented in this kind of a form, please write back to us and all these two, three ideas tell me if, if you find these innovative. If you find these innovative then definitely we are talking of marketing of innovations in services and we are talking of marketing of innovations in terms of products with innovative services. So you see restaurants can do that then tourism industry can try for that somehow and uh, we have talked about online portals, we have talked about you know several other kinds of products they, uh, they can uh, you know think of that and uh, you know just try and imagine that how can we do that and uh, then several kinds of pure services can be delivered with this kind of a perspective and so on. So services, products with services and so on. So let us take you know things a step further where you know look at this. You would say that definitely technology has enabled each one of these examples but no it is not just the case. Technology is an enabler uh, probably technology would move towards AI and those kind of things in due course of time which definitely is going to happen and that would enable things much ahead. Just imagine if somehow technology was not that prominent in these kind of examples still there was a scope of larger innovation in all, almost all sorts of services. For example, virtual healthcare services. Now you see 1 milligram, Tata Health, Farm Easy, NetMeds, eSanjeevni, Docs App, Practo and all these examples they talk about virtuality in healthcare services. Now you see Imagine that this virtuality was not being facilitated uh, beforehand, 
then also there was lot of scope in terms of as far as innovation in services go and we, we you see we can just create a graph wherein we can imagine that this kind of a digitalization enabled these kind of a services to take the present shape, but if that would not have been there then how this particular kind of an innovation bringing things at your doorstep would have been facilitated through just phone calls or just some other thing which, which could have been imagined and so on. So, and then look at you know digital payment services in terms of payment, phone pay, Google pay, Mobivik, ICICI pockets, free charge, Bheem and so on. And, and uh, let me keep reminding you that this is not the digitalization as innovation, this is digitalization as you know a facilitation in terms of innovation of those services. We could connect all the dots with the help of that. So, enablement would definitely come in one or the other form, but innovation of services is the mainstay and we are talking of marketing of innovation of services and specifically with the context of if something is new. You would realize one more important thing that for example, in virtual healthcare or digital payment services adoption of these kind of things did not happen overnight. Even if the wide applications of all of these are evident to us, but adoption was not easy. It was very difficult for Paytm to you know enhance the usage of uh, their services in due course of time. Uh, I do not know people uh, probably did not relied on these kind of services earlier or people did not used to try or that there was not uh, a sort of uh, you know larger adaptation by the vendors or the retailers. And then uh, you know when COVID came in then definitely it got an impetus and so on people say and then this happens with almost everything. So, difficulty in terms of marketing of innovation which we have already talked about always is there and there is a cycle which is always associated with that, but here we are specifically focusing upon marketing of innovation in terms of innovative services, delivery services definitely and, and try and collate few of these things basically if, if somehow we can do that at the end of the day. So, uh, you know Swiggy, Zomato, Rapido. Big Basket, Uber Eats, Milk Basket, Dunzo and so on and here you know all these services definitely would have that kind of a context which I just mentioned in front of you for example, you are trying something new and Swiggy facilitates that. So, they are facilitating timely delivery of course, if somehow they are facilitating the context you know to support the sales of those products also that would definitely be a larger enablement. For example, this delivery person comes in and he says or she says that well uh, you know you ordered this thing uh, and then this is another scenario uh, wherein you ordered this thing and sir uh, that the true context of this food is this and they describe it in front of you basically as if you are in a restaurant. Why not? We can do that. We have to make lots of extra efforts, but those efforts are worth it. And, and uh, you see that is where we are focusing upon, we, we realize that it is a volatile world and businesses they have to do so much in terms of being innovative as far as the whole scenario goes. Streaming services we have come a long way, but still adaptation is taking its own time. Uh, we cannot say that we have uh, moved completely away from as far as conventional uh, you know form of media or, or uh, you know streaming goes. So, Z5, Netflix, Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime still comes along with several mobile companies associations and so, so on. If that, that would have been so easily adaptable or adopted up, up till now why would people you know go for this kind of a clubbing in so on and Disney Hotstar and ALT Balaji and Woot and Sony and, and all these portals you know and then then ride. This has taken a you know larger shape as of now, but you would realize that still there is a huge scope of innovation as far as the whole scenario goes and although Uber, Ola and, and all these uh, you know uh, services are quite widely available now and uh, they have been adapted well, but not many entrants and players are coming into these. Not every driver or not every service provider has joined these kind of services as of now. Uh, you see there are so many things which can be done. In, in, in due course of time. Uh, there are so many things which can be uh, you know developed in terms of as far as delivery of these kind of services go. For example, there are some regular travelers. We know their algorithm, you know we our algorithm knows their traveling schedules basically. They, they often come out 
you know from their homes at these kinds of times on these kind of days they catch the flights or trains you know in due course of time they order uh, as far as uber and ola services go in at particular uh, times and we our algorithm actually knows our ai knows that are we facilitating them from our side saying sir probably you have to travel today would you be requiring a taxi today and so on we always go to the app and we order and so on so that we have achieved but are we going a step ahead we can do that somehow and then you see uh, that can be also associated with the airlines and airline uh, ticketing and those kind of things make my trip and these kind of organizations they are providing taxi services through their portals but can this happen that uber gets associated with make my trip or these kind of portals and they say that this passenger is coming and you know they are not ordering on uh, as far as uh, the, the screen goes why don't you contact them they are using their your services regularly and uh, be there once they reach there to facilitate the passenger well uh, in advance for example you are boarding off the plane and you are you are usually using metro so and and hopefully metro rail is listening to this so metro are they facilitating on board ticket service when you are still on plane they know that you know you would be going to the Uh, station and then you would be purchasing that ticket through some card or you, you are carrying that card or you you would be purchasing specific token so can it be provided to you on the plane when you are there so can we do that or on the train when you are there every train passenger or bus passenger when they board off they they would be locally traveling somewhere so can we do that so those kind of elements are there i am sitting at iit roorkee where and students they go back to their homes usually you know on on specific timings every year has uh, any services uh, you know any of the services have they started contacting the students that this is the time where you would be moving and uh, you know uh, you are trying to book the ticket so we can facilitate that that is one part but once you would be reaching to your cities or you are going to your cities these are the modes and we are ready to facilitate you once you board off in your cities or let's say from this city to that city somehow those kind of combinations can be generated as far as the whole scenario goes and we are talking of a size of population of not less than 20000 in this campus itself including uh, everyone and at least 11000 students at, uh, you know all together if every student on an average is traveling two times a year then we are uh, talking of uh, you know uh, 11000 uh, into 4 uh, sort of going back coming back so th- those kind of uh, travel schedules and then faculty is traveling for almost you know every faculty is traveling uh, nationally internationally almost 25 times so uh, multiply 500 by 25 and you would realize the kind of market we have so that is the you know perspective we are having in terms of as far as the whole scenario goes edx nptel one of the biggest and the best kind of things basically i have seen in terms of education services go and and i would be talking about that in detail also corsera an academy khan academy and khan academy i have found it fascinating you see salman khan uh, imagined that you know somehow and, and we are talking of not our uh, film actor mr salman khan we are talking of another mr salman khan so uh, uh, you know uh, so mr khan he imagined you know that uh, this can happen when he deliver uh, videos to the aspirants and today it it is providing almost all sorts of you just visit their website and it's it's amazing the kind of you know uh, things which they are providing and the, the kind of knowledge which they are providing through their portal it's not that others are not doing that but this is really good and i personally like that so uh, vedantu upgrade and byjus and and so on byjus is going through a different kind of a phase presently but definitely they they did well as far as initial phase goes so you see this is the whole scenario and everywhere my point is that everywhere you find a huge scope of innovation in terms of marketing of services goes let's look at spotify this is one of my favorites and and you see today you just go to their uh, app and you find almost everything and and uh, you see and then one of the most important elements is that they are continuously upgrading themselves in terms of inclusion of several kinds of things they have they have moved towards podcasts they have moved moved towards several other things basically and then uh, let's look at their story briefly and it's it's very interesting so so in the digital age spotify stands out as one of the most transformative forces in the music industry and we are using a specific reference which uh, you would find at the foot of the slide so now you see its journey from a swedish startup to a global music streaming giant as we all know is a testament to innovation all through 
I, I personally feel that you just serve for the artist, you just serve for you know the music and the songs and so on. And it's profound impact on the way people consume music. Music consumption, that is what they realize and it, that, that actually fascinates me, the way people consume music. So Spotify was founded in 2006 by Daniel Ek and Martin Lorenzen in Stockholm, Sweden. In October 2008, it officially launched to the public in, uh, it was officially launched, uh, you know, in selected European countries, introducing a groundbreaking concept, a music streaming service that offered access to a vast library of songs for free with advertisements or ad free with a premium subscription. It was a huge innovation uh, and then we talked about karma kind of things earlier as well. So this freemium model was a game changer as it provided a legal alternative to piracy making music easily accessible to a broader audience and they took care of these elements much beforehand. So early 2010s sort of you know beginning of that decade marked Spotify's rapid expansion. It entered the US market in 2011 and continued to extend its reach to various countries across Europe, Asia and beyond. Spotify's ability to secure licensing deals with major record labels and music publishers set it apart from some of the competitors as such and you know they, they took care of these kind of associations to take place. These agreements ensured that Spotify had a comprehensive catalogue of songs further enhancing its appeal and about Spotify I have personally realized as I would not say music consumer, but uh, you know, once you go to this app, you start going to it repeatedly and this is what happened, I am not saying because of people like me, but they have one of the largest shares as far as 30.5 percent and rest are also doing good, but they have created a huge space for themselves and this we have taken from a specific source uh, which is mentioned in the slide. So, you know, Diversification and podcasting as I said. So audio not just music will be the future of Spotify. What are we selling? What are we providing? We are providing audio and that is what they looked at as far as the whole situation goes. And you see I would be talking about flexibility in positioning in due course of time. And you would realize that if somehow you have this in mind beforehand, you would be moving towards that thing in due or, or you would be traversing from you know one positioning level to other positioning level. Positioning many a times we take at fixed, but if you decide that you would be flexible all through, you would be steering your product life cycle. I would be demonstrating that somehow uh, with flexibility and we have talked about PLC earlier as well. So audio not just music will be the future of Spotify, CEO Daniel Ek says. So Spotify recognized the emerging trend of podcasting and decided to invest heavily 1 billion euros in this space through acquisitions such as Gimlet Media, Content and Publishing, Dollar $194 million, Accor, you know, for creation tools and uh, podcast content and exclusive podcast deals with prominent creators like Joe Rogan, Spotify aim to position itself as a dominant player in podcasting. I, I personally feel like getting associated with you know uh, these kind of portals someday. Spotify has also expanded its offerings beyond music including video content, including video content interactive features, its Spotify wrapped campaign which provides users with personalized ear in review based on their listening habits and uh, you know became a cultural phenomena. This use of data driven insights of marketing was innovative and effective. I am reminded of iPod sometimes when I, I miss that product many a times. So Spotify's success is attributed to its brilliant marketing strategies, it emphasizes personalization engages in collaborations with brands, artists and influencers as we said and promotes its freemium model targeting users with ad supported services to encourage upgrades to premium subscriptions which they often do. This approach has fostered a strong brand image and user loyalty. As I said, once you will go, you will try, you, you would be there probably. Spotify's evolution from a Swedish startup to a global music streaming and podcasting powerhouse showcases its adaptability and relentless pursuit of innovation. Its impact on the music industry, podcasting and content, personalization, you see this is all these are service innovations. So its impact on the music industry, podcasting and content personalization is profound and it continues to shape the way people access and engage with audio content. And look at this slide and this is where I will end this session. Just look at you know how innovative Spotify has been in terms of as far as what 
their offerings are. So, they, they entered uh, early in the market definitely and I would not say early in the market, but before anyone and you know uh, they were in the right time. So, and they had data driven insights, They're, they they are definitely working upon their algorithms now and then and as I said, if somehow they use it more effectively, they would know how to take me there as far as the whole scenario goes. From music to podcast, can I be uh, you know moving from this side to that side, they can always do that. So, podcast and original content they included, but traversing from this side to that side might happen also in due course of time, personalizations and, and playlists. Uh, you know global expansion definitely freemium model was definitely an innovation and several other things which we have seen. So, I will leave you with this thought in terms of as far as marketing of innovation with reference to services go. I would be coming back to you that how further we can take our services with larger effectiveness to our customers and how innovative we can be in marketing of innovation in terms of services and marketing of services with innovation. I will be coming back to you till then goodbye.